Now the world knew that Alcatraz had finally blown up. The entire Bay Area had been aroused. And by the evening of May 2nd, millions of eyes were focused on the explosive little rock dead in the center of San Francisco Bay. Scores of guards from all the federal prisons of the nation were being flown in by prison's director, Bennett, who would arrive himself late that night. Early in the evening, Warden Johnson decided to have some of his men rush D-Block. Kretzner, standing in the sally port at D-Block, dropped the first four guards to enter the unit. Three were able to crawl back. One was dead. The personnel toll was now two dead, 13 badly wounded. Seven men still were imprisoned in cell 403. Gas had failed. The assault had produced a bloody list of casualties. Now Warden Johnston sent to the arsenal at Venetia for demolition bombs. This message was dispatched to the mainland by the associate warden. Serious trouble. Convicts have machine guns in cell house, placed armed guards at strategic locations. Most of our officers imprisoned by rioters. Cannot tell extent of injuries or damage done. We'll inform later tonight when we get control. This message was sent at 6.45 p.m. It would be almost three days and three killings to go before Warden Johnston got the control of his prison, he promised. We had a contingent of Marines arrive at the island to help us in controlling the main body of inmates that were not involved in the riot, and these men were in the yard, and of course the Marines were guarding the wall. When one of our officers went out to inspect the wall, and he found the Marines were loading their weapons, and uh, somebody said, uh, what's going on? And they said, do you hear the names those guys are calling us? We're not going to take that. Well, after talking the Marines out of wiping out all of the inmates on Alcatraz, uh, we proceeded onto our duty. We did need them at the time, and they certainly filled a, a need, particularly Warrant Officer Buckner, who was very skilled in demolition. A grenade falling to the ground outside D Block set a grass fire. Fighter planes dive, merely for psychological effect. Destroyers circled offshore. General Venegar Joe Stilwell from the nearby Army Presidio offered military help. But the 72-year-old warden, smarting under the worldwide publicity he was getting, turned it down. I, I, I could have been involved in that, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, the, I, uh, the uh, director of prisons, when he came out there, you know, it was a big thing. You know, they had the FBI and everything. And anyway, he called me out and he sat me down and he says, Harpus, you knew that this was going to happen, didn't you? Like that. And I said, I sure did. And I got news for you. Uh, the officials knew it, too. Everybody in the joint knew it. But the officials, when they were told about it, they just thought it was... Uh, too fantastic to believe, and it, I said, this all came out later, you know. Everybody's gossiping about it, so why shouldn't I have known about it? At noon of the second day, convict Hubbard messaged the besiegers, suggesting a deal. Warden Johnston agreed to hold off on the shell fire for one hour if the cons laid down their arms and surrendered at once. His reply from the mutinous convicts, a rifle bullet dead center through the nearest guard tower. The battle burst out more furiously than ever. Let's go out first class, Kretzer is said to have told his pals. Coy, Kretzer, Hubbard, Thompson, Shockley, Carnes. I don't believe that any of these men could ever have been rehabilitated, and I don't believe anything could have been done for them, and that the only possibility of them ever being returned to society was with old age. Mr. Buckner, who was the person in command of the contingent, had rifle grenades and ordinary grenades which he fired and caused to have fired at D block and at the side of the uh, penitentiary. Uh, however, none of these had any effect and uh, it was finally decided that uh, possibly we would have better luck by drilling a hole in the roof and lowering a charge down into the service corridor down the center of C block and exploding it from up above. So Mr. Miller and Warrant Officer Buckner, accompanied by myself and uh, two other officers, who proceeded to the roof uh, where a hole was drilled. In the meantime, Mr. Buckner was preparing a couple of charges. And uh, Associate Warden Miller said, what are we going to do with these? And Mr. Buckner said, well, we'll lower them down to the service corridor and explode them. He said, that should end the riot. And Mr. Miller thought a while and said, uh, well, how much uh, damage is it going to do to the cell block? 
And Buckner looked at him in surprise and said, cell block? There isn't going to be any cell block when these go off. And Miller said, oh, no. He said, we need this. We work here. Uh, so Mr. Buckner <laughs> decided to lessen the charges and lowered some ordinary grenades down, which apparently did the job as uh, all three of them were found dead in the service corridor later. Alvin Carvis recalls a scene of nightmare proportions. They had the Marines there. They had uh, a little destroyer sitting out there. They had airplanes flying over it. And this is all over three guys with two guns. And they shot the place to pieces. They used those uh, concussion grenades, everything else, you know? It was just like a, a dream, like, you know, a nightmare, because uh, these hand grenades would come down through there and ricochet around, and they would bounce off the walls and explode all themselves with them with shrapnel as a result of it. I'm telling you, it was quite a scene. <laughs> 